Welcome back to Swifty Travels. In this video, I'm going to give you four things you can do in the area of Point Loma, which is a peninsula on the south side of San Diego, and in my opinion, has the best views in the area. So we're on our way to Cabrillo National Monument. From Ocean Beach, you come down Catalina, down to the peninsula that makes Port Loma, and you follow um, federal property, Navy property, as you come down the peninsula. And we stopped at a cemetery here, a Naval Cemetery, to check it out. And there's actually really stunning views from here. It's the Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery. Fort Rosecrans was named after William Rosecrans, a Union General in the Civil War. This cemetery was registered as a California Historical Landmark in 1932, and it covers over 77 acres. It overlooks both the San Diego Bay and the Pacific Ocean. The views here are incredible. There was actually a military ship in the bay when we were there, and they did ask us not to record, but I highly recommend stopping there and checking it out. So this National Cemetery was actually a burial ground before 1847, and it initially started as an Army Post Cemetery in the 1860s. It was the final resting place for many who fell at the San Pascal in 1846. Also for the USS Bennington victims of 1905. This here is a special monument in memory of the men lost from the USS Midway. They said it was the USS St. Lo CVE, originally the USS Midway. What an honorable final resting place for these people who gave their service to their country. And now we continue along Catalina and we enter Cabrillo National Monument. The first turnoff heads down to the Point Loma Tide Pools. Okay, we lucked out with our National Park Pass. We were able to uh, bypass the line of traffic and get right in. The first stop is the Tide Pools, and there was a sign that said the parking lot was full. We came down here anyway and waited, and we did get a spot. But it's tight, and there's a lot of cars, so... But people come and go, so you can just wait for a space. half a mile on the coastal trail to the next parking lot. Okay people, please leave all the shells in the tide pools so the animals can stay in their home. Here's the entrance right here. Several different areas of tide pools. We just stopped by the first one and it is windy. You're probably having trouble hearing me, but now we're gonna go to the next. And there's just really cool rock formations in this area all along the cliffs. The rock formations here are so pretty and they're layers. Seems to be a lot of dead animals here. That one took a beating of some sort. I don't know, pelican maybe? The color of the water is very beautiful today. These steps keep going up. Up and up, I wasn't really expecting that many steps. This is supposed to be the tallest lighthouse, or at least it was back in the day, way up there on the hill when I was reading about it. Next up, we head over to the visitor center. So we're at Cabrillo National Monument, and what I was able to read a little bit before I came was that this is the spot where the first European landed in this area in the 1500s, Juan Cabrillo, and they made a national monument for him.
On the day we were here, there were park rangers outside showing us some of the tools and weapons that were used by the early explorers. Juan Cabrillo explored present-day California on behalf of the Spanish Empire between the years of 1542 and 1543. Make sure you walk out behind the park store for some incredible views. Now straight ahead there is the Naval Air Station. With downtown San Diego in the background. and Coronado. This monument was established in 1913 by Woodrow Wilson. The original statue ended up eroding over time due to the marine climate, so an exact replica was made from weather-resistant stone and was installed in 1998. This was funded by a local San Diego resident. And now we're heading over to the lighthouse. Here's the Point Loma Lighthouse, and what I do notice, besides it being quite windy, is look at all the dead brush here. You can tell why, why California's had such trouble with wildfires. The brush is just so dry from the drought. Up here at the lighthouse, the views are amazing. As you can see, the bay behind me that uh, is right next to Coronado Island up here. This was one of the tallest lighthouses. And they said it became problematic because it would always be covered in fog. So it wasn't very useful. That's what I was reading about it. But this is a great place just to come for the views. And there's a lot of sailboats out on the bay today. Now earlier when we were at that cemetery, there was a submarine going by and the Navy police actually asked us not to film. They didn't want any evidence of the submarine doing its thing. So that was interesting, but it has left the bay. They showed how the people that lived here used to keep a little garden for their food. This lighthouse was in operation for 36 years from 1855. The location proved ineffective because there was heavy fog and low clouds very often obscuring the light. This lighthouse is now a museum. For it was more than just a lighthouse, the family that operated this lighthouse actually lived here. The kids that used to live here actually had to row a boat across the bay to attend school in Old Town San Diego. This museum shows the simple way of life they used to live here at the lighthouse.